Hello friends, today I have brought to you another very interesting and very useful video on how to calculate intrinsic value of a share. I have been getting a lot of requests in the comments and direct messages to make this video on how I am calculating the intrinsic value of the shares in the case studies which I am making. So that is why I have brought this video so that you yourself can calculate the intrinsic value of any share which you want any time and this will be very useful to make decisions whether or not to buy a share and to identify multi baggers and in every uh, walk of your investment I feel this will be very useful to you guys. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel please do subscribe right now and hit the bell icon to activate the notifications and do watch this video till the end because I will be using two simple examples to explain you in very simple terms how to calculate intrinsic value. I am Varun Agarwal and let's get started. So this intrinsic value concept was introduced by Benjamin Graham and that is why it is called Benjamin Graham's formula. He was a professor at Columbia University and he was a very influential investor. He was one of the most popular investors in the history and he is also called father of value investing. He has written a book called The Intelligent Investor. In this book, he has introduced this concept. And this book is again very popular in the world of investing. Value investing, what is value investing? Value investing is deriving the intrinsic value of the common stock independent of this market value. So you without seeing the price at which the shares are selling based on the fundamentals, when you calculate the value of a share that is called value investing. If the intrinsic value is more than the price which is trading in the market, then you consider the share to be undervalued and worth investing. So investors should invest in the shares which are undervalued and they should hold them until that price which was lesser than the intrinsic value increases and crosses the intrinsic value. And after that, based on the time and uh, circumstances, they can recalculate the fresh intrinsic value and decide whether to hold or exit the share. So according to Graham, the intelligent investor is one who sells to the optimist and buys from the pessimist. So whenever the market is going very high and people are becoming too optimistic, an intelligent investor is somebody who sells to those optimistic people. And the market when it's going down and down the way it is going right now and people become too pessimistic the intelligent investor buys from those pessimists so the investor should look for opportunities to buy low and sell high due to price value discrepancies now price value discrepancies means price is the price which is trading in the stock market and value is with the one which you calculate as per this formula so you find out the difference between that, understand the difference and when the difference is huge, you invest and make money. That is the strategy in value investing. So the price value discrepancies that arise due to dis different economic uh, depressions, market crashes, one time events, temporary negative public publicity and human errors. So the present situation is one of the circumstances in this particular situation. So what is the formula to calculate intrinsic value? It is V is equal to earning per share into 8.5 plus 2G into 4.4 divided by Y. So this will look a little complicated to you when you look it at the first glance, but I will simplify it and explain you in such a way with two examples that you will easily understand and you will be able to calculate on your own right after this video gets over. So V is the value, the intrinsic value which is expected in the next 5 to 10 years. So we are trying to calculate the value which the share may have in the next few years. Earning per share is very common you already know that we will take for the trailing 12 months. So from the day we are calculating the intrinsic value from there we will take the past 12 months earning per share not of the last reported year. 8.5 he has taken as the normal PE of any company which doesn't have extraordinary growth. He has taken in this formula as a base PE. G he is taking for the growth. 
so he we should anticipate how much will be the average growth of the company in the next 5 to 10 years that much growth we should take as g in this formula 4.4 he has taken as base again which is the average yield of triple a corporate bonds when he made this formula we will not touch that number we will let it remain as it is in the formula and y is the current yield of triple a corporate bonds so the three values which we have to fill in this formula are earning per share growth rate and y which is the current yield the rest of the numbers will remain as it is so only three values you have to fill and you'll get the intrinsic value so let us take the example of bata and calculate its intrinsic value i have put a screenshot from moneycontrol.com and uh, first thing what we have to take for our calculation of intrinsic value is the earning per share of the trailing 12 months so if you see the red color arrow you will find on the home page itself of this particular script bata the eps for the last uh, trailing 12 months is about 29.38 for the simplicity we are assuming it as 30 the next what we need is the growth rate so for that you can calculate the grow average growth rate on your own also in fact different people may have different opinion to fill what is the growth rate as this is a subjective matter for a simplicity for an example sake we are assuming that the last 5 years average growth in the revenue of the company will continue as the future growth you can have a different opinion if the company has some good future prospects and the growth rate in future may be higher than the past you can use that particular growth rate also in the formula for the sake of uh, simplicity and uh, we are taking a, a quite comfortable growth rate which is an average of the last 5 years revenue so if you type in screener.com and search the script you will find the sales growth for the average 5 years and if you don't see that there is a option to add that in the website by registering there which is free you can do it sometimes in this website also there are errors and the sales growth is shown wrong in such cases you can calculate on your own compare the last 5 year sales and you can calculate how much is the average uh, growth rate of that sales that figure you can put it on your own also so if we see bata it is around 7.25% so g in our formula becomes 7.25 so earning per share and growth the third uh, item which we have to take in the formula is the bond yield so when you search on google 10 years yield of triple a corporate bonds in india you'll get this particular figure so from investing.com you can pick it up and you will get it at uh, somewhere around 6.081 as on date so these three things you need to calculate you have to fit full uh, in that formula so let us fill it in the formula and see so we have put as v is equal to 30 the earning per share into 8.5 plus 2 into g g is 7.25 which is the growth rate which we have taken into 4.4 which will be remain as it is divided by y which is the bond yield which is 6.021 so basically you are multiplying three numbers and dividing by one number first number is the earning per share 30 second number you are calculating by adding these two 8.5 plus 2 into 7.25 third number is 4.4 you will multiply these three and divide it by 6.081 if you do this you will get the intrinsic value of bata as around 500 rupees and the present share uh, market price is about 1335 rupees so by this you will get an idea whether you are investing at the right price or not whether you should wait for a downfall or not whether this company will show tremendous growth and the intrinsic value will increase or not it doesn't mean that just because the intrinsic value is less than the market price you should not invest if the company has very good prospects its earnings are going to increase its earning per share is going to increase its growth rate is going to be higher in the future then the intrinsic value also changes and it will match or either increase the trailing uh, the prevailing price in the market also but preferably it is advisable to invest in shares which are either equal to or less than the intrinsic value now let us take another example of a very popular company polycap 
So earning per share for the trailing 12 months from money control as we have taken earlier it is around 45 rupees. Again we are rounding off for simplicity. Growth rate from screener we can pick it up and it is coming to an average of about 15%. So we will take it as 15. Bond yield will be same that 6.081 so I am not showing that screen again. We will take it as 6.081. Now putting these three numbers again in the formula the same multiplication dividing by 6.081 you get the intrinsic value of polycab as 1253 and the last traded price you get it as 691. So you have found a company which is uh, trading at a price which is below its intrinsic value. So you, you have found something where you can invest and expect a good investment. So this intrinsic value is not just the only criteria. If some company is performing very bad in the past, also sometimes or temporarily there has been a problem in the company also, the share prices fall and they become less than the intrinsic value. So this is not the only th criteria for selecting the stock to invest, but this can be a very important and very useful uh, formula for you to take the right decision along with the other factors which you normally look at. So I hope this is uh, very simple to understand and very useful for you. Now let us conclude it that calculation of intrinsic value is not an exact science because this we are doing this on the basis of certain assumptions. So the number which we calculate is not an exact number and it may change from person to person and it cannot be done with 100% accuracy. But it will give you a broad idea and the value may differ from person to person based on his assumption which is putting mainly as a growth rate. But still it will give you as a benchmark to take the right decisions and do consider a margin of safety because you are working on assumptions. You, there can be a 10-20% uh, margin of safety which you can assume. And uh, this whole concept of value investing I feel is very useful for long term investors. And I hope you apply this formula the right way and take the right decisions in investing the stocks which you like. And if you like this video, do hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, hit the bell icon. And if you have any doubts, please post in the comments below. On your request, I have made this video as soon as I could. And still, if you would like to make, uh, ask me to make any other videos, I am open for it. Please leave in the comments below and I will do, I surely reply to your comments. And thanks for watching and have a great day.